Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Ina. Um, today we're lucky. Uh, uh, Police Chief Andrew Pesakowski, how does he say it? Pesakowski. Okay, all right. Has been kind enough to provide us with Sergeant Jason Jordan tonight. And he's a 17 year veteran of the Huntington Woods um, Public Safety Department. And he had 23 years with, as an on call lieutenant at the Northville Fire Department. He is also our fire inspector. And I know, I know, I know. And, and, for those, and, and for those of you who have Knox boxes, he came and put your little key away. All right, tell us everything. Well, everything. Uh, is this good enough or? All right, all right. So, I don't know if it. Uh, we can hear you. I don't know if that, I think this is more so for the camera. So, all right, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I appreciate it, Ms. Cohen. Uh, again, Jason Jordan, um, it's my pleasure to be able to hear, come here and talk to all of you. And this is something I really enjoy doing is reaching out to the, uh, the community, the members of the community, and letting you know what we have to offer as a department. And also, and I would like to uh, like take the time as well to like, if you have any questions or any concerns or anything, and Maybe I can, you know, help with any of your concerns, or if I can answer any of your questions that you have, I'll be more than happy to do that uh, this evening. Um, as far as like um, the information that, that I was initially uh, asked to relay to you, I, I don't. I, hopefully, we can expand on that. Um, but there were some some questions specifically about, um, you know, well, uh, in the Knox boxes. Okay, I'm the Knox box administrator uh, for the city and. Knox Box is a private uh, company, okay? And what they do is they specialize in access for fire departments. That's really what, they, they started out basically, you know, these buildings would be, you know, they were building buildings tougher and harder and, you know, they're becoming, you know, like high-rise buildings or, you know, larger and, and better built, like, you know, that, uh, you know, the, the block and the, the heavy steel doors. And as, as, as buildings became more, uh, you know, I guess you could say, uh, you know, heavy, you know, so to speak, or to guard against people from breaking into them, uh, you know, they inter had, you know, the bars, all these locks. So this company, you know, some time ago, I'm not an expert in the company, but um, they, 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 they said, hey, this is a niche that we could fill. We could, we could, you know, sell these boxes that are essentially a mini safe. That's really what they are. And hence the Knox box, right? You know, it's a Fort Knox. So uh, they, they sell these little boxes. You put the key in them, right, for the access to, like, the, the buildings, keys and codes. Okay, so, so what they did is they started doing this more for commercial buildings, all right? And then it was, like, the, you know, the big, you know, industrial settings. You know, it would be for like security uh, officers that were on the properties. Fire departments started using them when they would respond. Um, and it, what it has is an integrated uh, lock. You know, we have just just key lock into the box. And that key is specific to every community that uses it. So, so Berkeley has Knox boxes and we have Knox boxes. So Berkeley's key won't open ours. Only our key will open our, our community Knox boxes. Uh, our Knox, we have Knox boxes on commercial buildings, like out on Woodward. We have them on the school. We have them on our building. Uh, we, there's several out there in the community now. Residents are starting to get, um, get them installed. Um, so when we f first started doing this program, the boxes were kind of a little bit, little bit big, a little, little bit, you know, they're about, about yay big like this. All right, and then you would have to mount them like on your house, like into the brick next to your, your door. If you see them in the industrial setting, that's where you're going to see them. They're going to be mounted either recessed into the wall or mounted, or, you know, bolted on the, on the exterior of the building. Um, so, you know, it, it was working good and we had like two, maybe two, three, or four out there in the community. But what Knox came out with is they came out with a Knox home box. All right, the Knox home box is smaller obviously cheaper, uh, but it's, you know, it's still hardened. It's made out of the same uh, heavy duty, you know, uh, steel that they use. It still has the same integrated, 
you know, the lock, the heavy duty lock that accepts our key. So even if you were to have one of the larger ones on a commercial building or the one on a home, it's the same key. You know, and the keys that we have, to give you an idea, they're, they're very controlled. So like our keys are all secured like in our patrol cars and our fire trucks, they, we have them on our fire trucks and they're actually, we have them in the cipher locks. So we actually open up a cipher lock, you know, container just so we can access the key. That's how tightly controlled they are. And they're all numbered, they're inventoried, you know, um, so I mean they're, they're not out there. there there's, there's very few of them that we even possess as, as a public safety department. We, I can tell you right now, we only have 12 of them. So that's how the exact number of them. Because, um, I mean, we don't want everybody having them. Because basically, once you have that key, gain access to the box, open up the box, you have access to the, the, the key to the home. Usually people put one key in there. They, we key our houses, for the most part, the same, front door, back door, side door. Uh, and then uh, any kind of codes, you know, like on a little slip of paper, sometimes people will write the access code. Um, but we had really good, good success with that, and I was, I was very pleased. There was a, there was a gentleman, and I, I can't identify him, but, um, you know, I, I, I'd known this gentleman from a year, remember, and I'll get into our vacation checks in a little bit. We offer vacation checks for your homes. And so we would do, I'd do a vacation check, and he would go down to Florida, you know, you know it's kind of a snowbird, he'd go down to Florida for the winter, come back up here. And I knew him when his wife, you know, was around, and, and, and unfortunately she passed away. And then he was, you know, he was alone, and then I would go and talk to him, and uh, visit with him, I'd have coffee with him, and I was, he heard about the Knox box, and I was telling him about it. He's like, tell me about this. So I told him about the Knox box, uh, he's like, that sounds really good to me. I think I, I'll get that. His son called me. You know, they ordered it through the company. <clears throat> they ended up getting it. I came out. I secured the, his his house key into it with our key because you know you get it open. You can't you can't even lock it yourself. And you know, within the last you know, month, uh, he called. He, he had fallen down. You know, he, he had his walker and he had like a little bowl of cereal with some bananas and. He was going into his restroom and he, he tripped and fell and he fell into the bathroom. Uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't get up, he got access to his phone, he had his cordless phone, called his son and then he called us. And we were able to go up to the house and instead of breaking down the doors, I mean that's another thing with these Knox boxes, the only access that we have without your key is to break down a door, break a window, you know, and I, I, I'll tell you myself personally, I don't want my, I don't want my door, front door broken down. I don't want my side door busted out. You know, it, it ends up just, you know, damaging the door jam. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have some property damage. But with this key, I went and got it. It took merely seconds. Pulled up my car, hit the cipher lock for the patrol car, grabbed the key, went to the side door, opened up the side door, and, and we're in within moments. <clears throat> so that's kind of the product. Um, no, like I said, it's a private company. So the, the customer pays for the merchandise, you know, pays for the product. They receive the product. We will get notification. Like I just recently was notified via email that a resident in town here had ordered one. Um, so I received that notification. Uh, they'll get it. They'll contact our department. And then I go out there with the keys, secure their key into it. And then uh, we also put it in our property information system. Um, and then th we know that they have a Knox box where it's at as well. And uh, so really the, the partnership between us and Knox more so is they sell the product. We, you know, we want our uh, access you know, to the buildings, obviously. You know, in an emergency situation, it helps us out. And then uh, we, just, we possess the keys and you know, we you know, get it out to the community and we utilize a product as well. Um, so if there's any other questions that you have on the Knox box, I also did bring um, like 20, uh, 20 handouts here uh, for the Knox home box. So I'm hoping that if you're interested in doing that, you'll, you'll take advantage of, of one of the handouts. It shows you what it is, um, and then you just go on their website and you order it. So any questions on the Knox box program at all for you? How much does one cost? Uh, I, I was just looking at the pricing. It's the one of them was one hundred and eighty-three dollars with a hanger. Okay. So um, with a hanger, and 
Yeah, so, so remember how I was telling you that you, you know, pri company, uh, businesses mount them recess into the, the brick wall or steel or they, they drill them into there? Um, what happens is you can do the same thing. You can you could get a big box if you wanted to. You know, you could get the larger box if you wanted. If you want to put a bunch of keys in there, like a key ring, you could do that as well. It's a little bit more expensive. But the smaller one, you can either mount it the same me method, or they have like a stainless steel door hanger that goes over the, you know, in the door jam, just hangs over like a wreath hanger would at the top of your door. Now that way, you know, when you close your door, you can't just grab it off there or nothing like that. And it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, hefty. You know, it's pretty thick gauge stainless steel. Um, so uh, yeah, so the the hanger like increases the price uh, marginally. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it, the, yeah. The whole point of of the uh, Knox boxes is obviously for uh, access to the door. You want it to be near the door, uh, but you also want it to be identifiable uh, to our, our personnel. Um, I, I did briefly mention that we put it in our dispatch computer system, the CAD computer system. So what happens is, when somebody installs this, say you, you know you install it in your home, and you, I'd have your name, your address, your phone number. I would, con I would install, I'd come install your key and say it was at your side door or on the west side of the house. And then I would go call our dispatch center and say, I want you to bring up the property you know, record for this address. And I want you to indicate that, you know, put notes in there that there is a Knox box is on the west side entrance, west side door. And then they put that in our computer system. So if there's ever a dispatch to your home, they're going to type it in, and it's going to pop up with, you know, a flag it with notes that that the, so the officers or the you know, responding to your home know there's an Xbox there. Yes, ma'am. You have to open it before you can open the door. Yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, here in Huntington Woods, we're public safety. And we're not just, you know, police officers, but we're firefighters. I'm sure everybody knows that, right? But we're also EMS. So we're licensed emergency medical service. We're licensed EMS agency in the state of Michigan. We're actually mandated by law to respond to all EMS emergencies within the community. Uh, so when we do come out there, um, we're just not allowing access to the ambulance. Now, we do contract with an advanced life support company, uh, agency. Now, it's Alliance EMS, uh, uh, Alliance Mobile Health, but um, that, they're advanced life support. So they have like a drug box, they have like life-saving medications, but all of our personnel are all uh, medically licensed uh, by the state of Michigan, either on the medical first responder, uh, which would be like your, um, your first level, I'm an emergency medical technician, which would be like in the middle, middle range, and then we actually have our director of public safety, our chief is, uh, you, know, you know, Chief Hoskowski, he's actually a, a paramedic, and we also have another paramedic who is a career firefighter as well. So we, all of our, every, we have 100% of all of our personnel are licensed uh, medical personnel. And so when we get there, we're not just gaining access, we're getting a, gaining access so we, we can provide that initial uh, first responder, that medical treatment as well, and then the ambulance would normally come afterwards. So, yes ma'am. That would be a company. That would be a question for the company. Uh, if you move, that 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 lock mechanism is only for Huntington Woods. So it could it, could it be retooled? Could you send it back to the company? I, I would highly recommend that you'd have to contact the company on that one. They're, they're, we cannot do anything. No, I, I didn't. Yeah, we can't do anything. And and a, and a private and a private consumer, um, they would not be able to to be able to retool it. So. Is yes, there a monthly fee for this service? No. It's, it's completely 100% free. Once you buy the product and you install the product, we don't charge any fees. We, we has, there's no fees for the service. I mean, this is something, I mean, we believe in, very strongly in this because, I mean, it, it allows us to gain faster access to you, the citizen in need. So, you know, we're not going to charge anybody for that. So this is something that helps us help our people, our residents. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just curious, if you're on vacation and one of your neighbors says there's something weird going on in your house, <laughs> around your house, okay. our, my neighbors, we always sort of watch mm -hmm. your house. Can they call or can I call you and have you check out my house and go into the Knox If you have the Knox box, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. If that was upon your request. Yeah, okay. It's more designed for an emergency, emergency. situation. But that can be done. It would, yes, it would be able to be done. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. That that logistically that would be you know extremely difficult. Uh, we don't keep keys to you know private citizens' homes, uh, and it, there's all kinds of different reasons for that. Logistics would be, a, well, logistics would be difficult. Um, also, there's some liability liability issues because you have direct you know you're actually holding people's house keys. You know, so yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, the both keys, you know, I, I have seen it before. Both keys it will fit in there. It's very tight uh, on the residential one. But the larger ones, definitely you can put more than one key in there. They, they market this as one key, but um, it, it's tight, but you can get two keys in it. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, it, it will. It will handle two keys. Um, you're not going to get like a big key ring in there. Nothing like that. Those would be the little larger boxes, um, like the commercial, like more for the commercial grade. Because uh, a lot of the times, you know, you go to these businesses, they have a larger key ring. They have multiple keys, a master key, a suite keys. Um, those, in those situations, um, yeah, those, those boxes will take more. But the residential one, I found, I have been able to put two in there. But it's very, very tight. It is very tight. It is designed for one key. Uh, it, it is skinny. I mean, I guess it's about yay, you know, it's about yay, uh, that thick. Uh, the actual, the actual dimensions actually are listed here. It's four and a half, 
4.2 inches high, 2.37 inches wide, and only 2.05 inches deep, so two inches deep. So, yeah, I mean, you know, th th those two keys without the ring would fit in there. Without the ring? Mm -hmm. Yes. So they just kind of lay in the No, there's like a little post that they would go on. Yeah, there's a little post inside, and then you just put them on the little post in there. Okay. So, yes, ma'am. Well, I'd have to put mine on the back of that side of it. That'd be fine. But the question is, is there room for a key and maybe two keys? Because I have a storm door that is keyed also on the front. But my question is, I have to put the code to get into my garage in there and a note somewhere, or do okay. I put is that in my history? Well, they can put that in the dispatch uh, okay. system. So the code is in there. So yeah, so. Get in my garage door first. Yeah, so if you had your code is one, two, three, four, uh -huh. you know, um, our, we would add that to our dis okay. our CAD, our computer aided dispatch. No, no, you wouldn't have to do that. You know, they would pull it up, look at the notes, and you would have to obviously update it with us because if you change the code, oh, yeah. you know, then you would have to update it with our with our dispatch. You would have to call the city, the okay. department. Yes, ma'am. I thought I heard you say for the small lot, um, it cost 183 Yeah, uh, actually, I brought the pricing here. <clears throat> the small box, the list price is, bear with me just for a moment here. Wall mounts, 183 I'm sorry, that's the hinge mount. The hinge mount is 183. The wall mount uh, is 167. So it's, the wall mount is actually roughly $20 cheaper. The one that's 183 has actually got the, got the door hanger. Um, like I said, that's obviously going to be the faster you know, installation. You don't have to have it you know, screwed into the you know, block or nothing like that. You can put it on any door you want. Yes? The, the customer, you would, you would have somebody install it. You get a handyman or you know a family member, they, you would actually install it if you get the wall mount. So. Does that have anything to do with you know people who you know help seniors um, with handyman projects for free? Do they install those? I I don't I don't know I I can't speak for them. I don't know if that that program that you're you're talking about. Um, I'm not. I don't know about that program. I'm sure, I'm, you know, I've, I've seen that most people have no problem getting them installed. Yeah, so. Most, and most people don't have much problem installing it. Okay, so my other part of my question was, could you repeat the dimensions of the small box again? And then could you give us the price for the large box? I, I don't have the price for the large box. You would go online to knoxbox.com, but, um, and the, the, the website is right here on the, on the sheet on the very bottom. There's a telephone number as well. Like I said, you know, it's a company, you know, they, they, they sell a product, they believe in their product, and they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to help out the customer. You know, whatever your needs are, they're trying to meet, meet all of your needs. So pretty much about good, good on the Knox. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, there is a reflective strip to help with the, help with the visibility. All right, so all right, I pre I hope I answered all your questions on the Knoxbox pro program. Um, hopefully, uh, I'll be getting lots of emails out there. You know, people are buying them. Uh, we also have the uh, I, I wanted to cover the Nixo program as well. Uh, the Nixo program is like a web-based notification uh, system. It goes through. It can be send a text message to your phone. Actually, I get it myself. Uh, it can get, it can send you uh, email notification. Um, but basically, the Nixle program is something that our department uh, we subscribe to. It uh, allows us to send out like those text message email blasts for you know any emergencies in the community. So if there's like uh, any severe storm damage, road closures, um, if there was an area or police situation where we wanted you to stay away from the area, or maybe a fire, to let you know the road's blocked. Um, 
but we, we, we have this program, and like I said, it's Nixle, N-I-X-L-E, um, N-I-X-L-E. Uh, you can go online, you can download like the app or you know, put your information in there, and then it, like, with your telephone number, and they'll, they'll get these text alerts. So if there's anything in the community here of a public safety emergency, you know, we're notified, or you'll be notified. So, and then we do, we're pretty, we're very good about, like if there's any serious situations going on in town that people need to know about, uh, all of our command officers and uh, have been directed to send the blast out immediately, keep the citizens and the residents as, as notified as we can, you know, up to date on what's going on. Um, we also, uh, the other thing that uh, I was asked about is some of the fraud things going on right now. Um, it's actually, uh, you know, what these people, the capacity of some of these criminals out there to come up with new schemes is, is scary and, and endless and boundless. I mean, uh, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, and, and this is, uh, this is they, they will do everything they can to target the senior community. All right, um, they will find, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, if you get a phone call, a lot of times, you know, this is one of the things they'll do. They'll call and they'll say, you know, um, you know they'll look at in the phone book and say it's Betty living there. And they'll be like, hey, Aunt Betty, hey, Aunt Betty, this is John. John? Yes, yeah, John, you know, I'm, I'm, in, you know, I'm in jail, I need bond money. And what? You need bond money? Yeah, it's John. I need help. You know, will you help me out? And then they remember, well, I do have a nephew named John, his common name. And to give you a perspective, all right, what these what these low lights are doing, essentially what's that's what they are. I mean they're they're picking and they're they're actually going, you know, targeting, you know, uh, people on like fixed incomes, you know, uh, they're targeting innocent you know, uh, people, I mean, that, vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable. yeah, anything they can do for money. And what they're doing is they're attacking this vulnerable segment of our society and our community. Um, and what they do is, is if they can say on a day, they can call 100 people. They'll, they'll call 100, 100 people, identify them, call 100 people, and if they can get three of those people, out of a hundred to send them a thousand dollars, they just made three thousand dollars, right? So if you do the math, how long would it how to make a hundred phone calls? Start talking, they hang up on you. Start to go to the next one. Um, it's tragic, um, but it happens all too often. So, like the bond, that's one thing that's out there. Uh, the other thing is, if there anybody anybody ever calls you that says I'm a police officer. You have a warrant for your arrest. I'm going to tell you right now. We don't call people and tell you you have a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> All right. I mean, that kind of defeats. In some cases, that defeats the purpose. You know. And, and I mean, you know, it says you have to. You have to think. Let, think about it. Uh, you know, do they have a warrant for my arrest? Um, one, they're not going to be calling me. And, and you know, we laugh about it, but but you would not believe how many people pay it. All right, and then they sound very official. You know, a lot of these guys they watch, you know, crime TV shows. You know, or you know, they'll be they'll have like, um, like these. You know, they have these telephone schemes where like the Google has these Google phone numbers and everything through computers, and they're like untraceable. They're untraceable telephone numbers. So the number pops up. It's like two four eight whatever. And you're like, oh well, you know, and they'll 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 have these scripts and they're like, I'm Captain John Smith with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Yeah, and then and then you have you have a warrant for your arrest and you know I want I want you to go out right now and I want you to buy I want you to, you know, you're gonna have to pay for your your your, uh, your warrant, okay? And what you're gonna have to do is for me to go do away with your warrant, you're gonna have to go to Myers, you're gonna have to get four gift cards cash cards, you're going to have to mail them to this address, and people do it. People do it. Because it, because what, what, do we, what have we learned since we're, like, 
Like I'm like my my dad was a police officer, my grandfather's a police officer. I always talked about my great great grandfather's being a police officer. So authority, right? So we grow up with this authority, and we go through our lives, you know, respecting that authority, okay, and thinking that that if, you know the people in those kind of positions are going to look out for us, they're going to serve us, they're going to look out for our best interests. And then when the, one of these criminals come up with one of these schemes, it catches some people off guard. And it surprises them. They're like, "Oh, what did I do wrong?" You know, maybe you know. It sounds authoritarian. It sounds like they, they have a uh, thing going on. And I'll summarize it here. If any if anybody calls you like that, or the IRS is another scheme. I, I, you know what I would tell somebody if they if they call me and they say this is the IRS, we're coming to get you. I'm like, come and get me. I'm waiting right now. <laughs> come up come up to my front door. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? So. Just tell them that, feel good about it, feel their empowerment. You'll feel that little chill go up your spine, you're like, yes, that felt good. <laughs> you know, and then, and then hang up on them. But I'll tell you this, if you have ever had any questions, say, say, say that IRS person just sounds really, really good, you know, and you're like, well, I'll contact my attorney or something like that, and they, they keep on going. Um, like I said, IRS are not gonna call you, you'll get something in the mail from the IRS. And, they'll, and the IRS will say, you know, you're doing this, you are going to come see us. They, the IRS don't come to see you, they, you go see the IRS. Um, but what's gonna happen is, uh, and, and I, I need to encourage everybody to do this. Like, a lot of times when these schemes happen, you know what happens after the following this? Uh, I mean, not only do we feel very upset, because, you know, for the most part, um, you know, when we, when our officers here, we've worked very hard to get a very core, like a, like a very select core of officers, from, from the newest officer to our most senior lieutenant to the director, okay? We worked very, very hard to like hand pick and choose, you know, the, the best candidates for this department. And by doing that, we've ensured that every single one of those, those employees, you know, of those officers, that we that are here to serve you, the community, believe a couple things. One, that this is our community. So if they live in Troy, or like I lived, I grew up in Northville and lived in Novi for a long time. Um, I came here, and when you know, and, and sometimes in law enforcement they say you don't don't um, you don't want you don't want to you don't want to uh, necessarily you know say that they're, this is my city or my people, you know, because that's, remember the old town sheriff, you know, this is my town, you know. They, <laughs> but, but you know what, what I've seen is not necessarily it's not my town, is, you know, but these are my people, these are my, my citizens, these are my residents, and I've heard that from our officers. So when these things really happen, you know, and then an officer takes a, front, a report at the front desk, so I'll come in the back, and like, hey, Sarge, you know, this happened. You know, and then they're talking about it for an hour. And, and the reason they're talking about it for an hour is because it really upsets our officers because they, they really have a bond with the community and they care about our citizens because then they're like, you know, I just can't believe she, you know, can't believe she would have paid that money. You know, and it really upsets us. And we want to get the bad guy, so to speak. We want to get them. But with these new fraud schemes and technology, it's very difficult, not impossible, but extremely difficult for our, an officer at a municipal level, at a city level, to go out and successfully you know, get, get the bad guy, so to speak. Um, so when, when these things do happen, one of the things that are always said consistently is I wish he or I wish she would have come to the station. And, and, I, and I, I've asked people, I said, well, why don't you come to the station? Why don't you just come and talk to us? And you know what, they, what the, the response I've got is, well, I didn't want to bother you. You know, you guys, you're busier with bigger things. And this is my answer to that. The big things that we deal with every day are our citizens and the residents. Uh, the citizens that pass through, those are the big things I deal with every day. It's the individual. If, if, if I'm not at the individual level dealing with each individual person that I come across every day, and I've, if that's not my level, then I, I'm in the wrong career, right? I mean, that's, that is my bread and butter. The people are what 
you know, that's, that's our job, is to, to provide that service. So if a resident comes to me and says, hey, I received this phone call, please come to me. If, if something seems suspicious to you, if you see something suspicious and you're like, I don't want to bother the police department, you know, all oh, that, that car alarm's going off next door at three o'clock in the morning, call. If, you know, our officers want to talk to you. I mean, there's no officer at that department right now in those kind of situations that will say, oh, I wish they didn't call. They want you to call. They want you to tell us about that car alarm because we might get that person break into the car. We want you to tell us about that suspicious phone call you got where the, where the person is like telling you about like these warrants so our, our, our lieutenant can tell you right away, no, 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 don't, don't give him any money, don't talk to him anymore, just hang up on him. All right, we want you to do that. So please don't hesitate. You know, this day going forward, if you've done it in the past, call us immediately. Or come and visit us. I mean, we'd like you to come by the station. We like talking to people. We like, you know, uh, you know have coffee or whatever. And if, you, and if you can't do that, if, you know, call and we'll send an officer out to your house. All right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, so there's, there's, that's a concern. So, so you, so that's a very concerning phone call right there. Like what you just said, they call you and they give you a number to call somebody else. That's when you just hang up. Well, we did. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If they if they call you and give you a phone number to call somebody else, well, well, have that person call me. You know, and just hang up. You know. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as I hear them, I get them, and then um, like I got. They'll, leave, they'll actually like leave a voicemail a lot, of, a lot of times, or some cut out at voicemail. But as soon as I start hearing it, if you're not my, if you're not my grandma, if you're not my brother, you know I don't want to talk to you anyways. <laughs> you know, say, you know, so or you know, like my kids, you know, my brother, my mom, you know, my grandma. I mean, those are the people I answer. Uh, if if I don't recognize it, it's either work related. Um, but if it's and once they start, especially recordings, I just hang up right away. I don't ga I don't gamble. I don't play a lottery. I don't believe in like if, if you know what, what was the thing they always say? If it's uh, too good to be true, it, it's not, right? So if it's too good to be true, it's not. So as soon as they start hearing you won, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no thanks. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And it has a Missouri address on it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they they are putting local. You know, this is uh, this is home for me too because my grandma was actually you know a victim of, of like this kind of fraud, and she's like, well, I thought you know I'm like grandma, <laughs> your son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, your grandpa was a cop. <laughs> Call me, <laughs> you know. I mean, ask me, you know, something. And and uh, you know, she's like, I know, I I should have done that, you know. And 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 uh, like my grandma actually, she lives on North Hill. She was re she was born in the house that she lives in. So she's like, all right, this house I can get all this money for. And I'm like, we'll sell it. She's like, hey, I can't. I was just born in this house. <laughs> she's like, the property is worth more than the house is worth. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. Um, I'm changing the subject. I read in the, the annual report that you do home inspections for fire and safety. We will, we will do home inspections. Now, I do, like you mentioned in, in your introduction of the fire inspe inspector for the city. So annually, by city ordinance, I have to go around to all the businesses and the commercial buildings and public buildings, and buildings open to the public, like this building. All right, I have to do that every year. I go around all these buildings and I inspect them. Um, we do do home fire inspections, but they're, they're, but I have no enforcement. You, you, know, you right. see what I'm saying? Like, like, so when I go into a business, I can enforce the law, enforce the life safety code. Um, we will come in there, but it's very, um, it's very relaxed, very informal. Like the actual building inspections are very formal with the reports and everything. Coming to the, uh, a private home, very informal. And they usually, uh, I'm looking more so for like storage. 
you know, I mean, and then, you know, well, since you bring that up, I, I will tell you this, basements, right? If you have, you know, everybody's, you know, for the most part, most of our furnaces are in our basement, correct? If you have a basement, or if you're, even if you don't, it's gonna be in, in like a furnace room on the ground floor. Um, and all I'm gonna say is this, so if you have a, a furnace, remember that furnaces, a lot of hot waters, uh, heaters, are, have gas pilots, um, you know, even our gas stoves, anything that has, you know, a flame, or high heat, uh, if you have any items close to it, you, please move them away. Uh, I've gotten, we've gotten, in, we've had like fires in basements where I've walked in there and the furnace literally was jam packed. You know, they had, they had, you know, they had like presents and wrapping paper laying on top of the furnace. All those pipes get really hot, and they and they transmit heat, and and they're gonna anything, anything is is. It's, uh, even if it doesn't ignite right away, it's pyrolysis. So what it does, is if there's like cardboard up against it, it's going to break down the compounds and dry out that material. Basically, suck the water right out of the heat over time, and it's just continuing to build and build and build, and it could cause a fire. So if you do have a fern, you know, down your basement, your storage areas. Sometimes I got to do it too because I'm like looking. I'll be like looking for the kid, like a picture when the kids were like three. And I'm down there, I'm like going through the picture boxes and everything. And I'm like, I knew I saw that picture one time. And then next thing I know, I find it and I walk, start to walk out of the furnace room. And I look behind me and all the boxes are spread all over the place. You know, I was so excited to find that one picture. It just, that's a true story. That just happened the other day. Uh, I was like, yes, you know. But I, I would look back and I'm like, ooh, that's kind of close to my furnace. So I pulled it away. So make sure that you just keep all that stuff away from any of the, any gas fired flame. Appliances. Any recommended distance? Uh, I'll tell you right now, that's good. It's uh, 36 inches. 36 inches for furnaces. 36 inches for any like gas flame uh, appliances, furnaces, uh, well, hot water heaters. For electrical boxes, uh, electrical boxes, 30 inches. So, electrical boxes, and then that's another thing too, is your home electrical box, where it's at. You want to make sure your door is closed, that you have a door on it. Because a lot of times what people do is, you know, they, you know they, that one fuse always blows, right? You know, or, you know Sam, you, you, plugged in, you plugged in the vacuum in the wrong outlet, right? And it always goes and hits that one fuse or that one breaker. So you, you leave the door open. So what happens, though, and we've had fires where it, like heavy rains or something like that, uh, water would get in an electrical box or something will happen like I don't have electrical overload. That door on those electrical boxes is designed as a safety feature, very simple safety feature, but that door, if there's a, is a catastrophic arc or something like that inside the box or the breaker blows out, I've seen breakers blow out to where the breaker goes across the room and hits the other side of the room. But that door, if that door had been on there, once it blows, it keeps, it contains that electrical fire so to speak. You know, so a lot of times that door being on there, it's going to, if you have an arc, it's going to, it's going to keep it contained in there and it's going to smother any kind of fire. But if it's open and you leave that open all the time, you blow out, you can catch the tapestries on fire, clothing. Yes, ma'am. I've never heard that. And I, I've never heard that. I can't comment on that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not an electrician. I'm sorry, ma'am. Yeah, I'm not an electrician. Now, I would recommend that you contact an electrician. I mean, I can only. I can only comment on what I know and my expertise. Yes, ma'am. No, not that I know of. No. Yes, ma'am. Last year, I had a generator put in. Yeah. They're $50 each. And the secret is to put a hole in the back. They don't mm -hmm. make those cushionetic things anymore. Mm -hmm. And so a hole in the back with the newer switches is only $200. But I have like 24 of these cushionetic things. And so I have a whole lot of paper for that one. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you definitely want to, you know, want to, for, you know the, the electricians and the professionals that are in the trades. Uh, you definitely want to, you know, obviously, you know, listen to them. Uh, I had the push matics in my old house. I was building 58. 58? Yeah, so I had push matics And then one went bad. It kept bopping. And it was, it was very difficult to get a replacement for it. So I ended up doing the same thing. Yes, ma'am. I hate to keep moving you from subject to subject. I'm fine with it. Thank you. Okay, years ago, Huntington Woods used to have a decal that they used to give you to put on the window of a baby's room mm -hmm. or an invalid or an animal or something like that. Mm -hmm. Do they still do that? And is it something that you consider doing? I replaced my window. So I don't yeah, know that, that program is like, um, it was that Operation Tot, you know, that Tot Finder. It was like an oval uh, reflective um, sticker. I know what you're talking about. Uh, the fire department had them, and like when I was growing up, there was a firefighter in my family. Is that not so, so useful? yeah, they don't have them anymore. I mean, it was a big program that they pushed. Um, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> nowadays we check the we check the you know the whole home, and the, really, if you look at it, it, that's more for like the reason the way we fought fires. Um, it it's kind of gets into a little more in depth, but back then we fought fires from the outside. Right, so that, that program was actually like 70s, <laughs> 60s and 70s. Firefighter protective equipment was not as advanced as it is today. Um, I mean, it's still dangerous, but it will protect you up to like 500 degrees uh, for a certain amount of time. Um, what happens is the, the tactics of firefighting changed over the years. So back then they would pull up, they'd have rubber coats, you know, like maybe steel helmets, and then they would see a fire and they would start smashing out windows and spraying water into the home. And then the strategies change over the years, the tactics change, and as equipment got better, as our nozzles got better, we had more water, better pumpers, we would go inside and fight the fire from the inside, interior uh, structural firefighting, um, which negated that kind of, that sticker, right? Because what before it was like you run around, smash out the window where the kid is and grab the kid out, you know, right? Um, but uh, then it, it kind of went away from that. Now, as far as you getting it, you know, there are some that are commercially available. And I would, I'm not saying it's bad. I, I, I think I would recommend it. I would do it. And then because what we do is our incident commanders on fires, you know, all of our, all of our officers, our command officers, uh, like sergeants, lieutenants, you know, the deputy chief, the chief, you know, we've all been through fire officer, you know, training, certification training. And one of the things that uh, we do is called the instant command system. We do a 360 around like a building fire and we'll look at all the windows and, you know, we're getting the whole big picture of it as they're getting all the equipment ready. So that would be something that you would see. So I highly recommend it. The problem, like I said, it went away is because people want to take it out the windows. Also, and firefighters were going in to these buildings risking their lives, right? So the family is living there. They have it on the window. They move out. The firefighters are, you know, running in that window thinking or getting in that room thinking the kid's in there when there wasn't really any kid in there. They were, yes, ma'am. My daughter has one on that interior door mm -hmm. in the house that one of the bedrooms kids in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, another, that was another concern as well. That was another concern as well as people that would know where your kids are in the house. So, and that, that was more with the, the push and crime. There's a multitude of reasons, but it just, it was one of those programs that was really big. <laughs> like that point that you just said, I didn't even think about that, the whole you know, kidnapping of children and stuff, which is possible. Um, that was obviously a concern. Not me. <laughs> that awkward moment you're like, did I put my phone on silence? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, actually, actually, you know, the, the way I learned about smart91.com is via this email I received to talk, talk, talk to all of you. That's the first time I've ever heard of it before. Um, and I did do like a little researching before I came and talked to you. 
I will say this though, the Smart 91, remember I was telling you about the Clemens CAD system, the, the, the computer aided dispatch. Remember I was talking about the Knox boxes and the property information. That Smart 91 is like, it's like an app or something like that where you put in information about you, specific information um, that you're giving to a private organization, mind you, right? Somebody, somebody created that app and you're giving that to them, put it in their cloud, in their, their, their data, you know, whatever their data cloud is, and then they're sharing that with public safety agencies. Um, I will say this, if it was something like a Knox box, property specific codes for your home, we have what's called Clemis, which is the Clemis system has been around for, you know, since the uh, 70s. They were creating the Clemis system and each year it gets better and better and better. Um, and they put, uh, the Oakland County puts a lot of work into this system and they have IT professionals working around the clock on this system. They've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears throughout the years on this, and it's, it, is, it is a very good system. And, uh, you know, it's been the, like the hallmark of a lot of people, a lot of uh, professionals' careers in like the IT to work on that. And uh, that being said, if you do have like specific information, that system, that dispatch system has the capacity to put that in to property notes it's called, or address notes. So that if you do call 911, we have advanced 911, right? So you call 911, it's gonna pop up with like, you know, your location, or you know, if you're calling from a landline. Um, but also you're gonna say, even if you're on your cell phone, you're gonna say, I'm at you know, 123 Main Street in Huntington Woods. They're gonna, they're gonna type in 123 Main Street because they have to dispatch the patrols or the fire department or the ambulance to the house, and it's going to come up with those notes. So that's that's just the way it works. Yes, ma'am. So are you saying that it's better to come directly to you to put that information in? Like I said, or use that cloud business? Like I said, I'm not an expert on smart911.com. I think you would have to go to the company and ask them, you know, smart911.com, how it works. I, I'm not an expert on it. I can't say. You know, I, I could, I have no formal training in it. I'm not an expert in it. I don't know anything about it really, right, other than what is, I've seen online. But is the concept, like, as far as maybe what you might understand, is the concept of information Yes, okay. that's what I'm saying. But just one more thing. site, the Oakland County Sheriff has uh, interacted with them. So that if, if your 911 call goes into the Oakland County Sheriff and you're calling from your cell phone, it pops up on their screen, even though you're calling from a cell phone. Yeah. That, that, that's so what, you, so what you're doing, it links your cell phone to your address. Right, and that's, that's, the, that's the, the reason I'm mm -hmm. interested in it, because it, it seems to me that like, when we had the floods or whatever, mm -hmm. and people were relying on their cell phones, and they make a call, uh, at least the police or emergency responders would immediately know mm -hmm. whatever information you choose to put in. You don't have to put much in there, but you can add it. And so it's hooked onto your landline and that would come up. And it seemed to me if the Oakland County Sheriff vetted it, that it would be worthwhile that they're on there. And gross points on there. And like, like I said, I, I can't say anything for or against it. I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's a good program. It, you know, you say the Oakland County Sheriff Department has it. Um, and if they do have it, then obviously it, it, it met some need that they had. But I, I will say this about Huntington Woods, though, we're a small community. The Oakland County Sheriff is an entire county, the entire county of Oakland. It's a pretty big, you know, you know, millions of people in the in I mean, Huntington Woods is a smaller scale, and um, whereas whereas maybe if you come and talk to you know like you know other county services, they don't really have that one-on-one -on -one capability, as you would more so living in Huntington Woods. That's you know, that would be my belief. I mean, but as far as the program, it's not something we can't look into. It's something that would be above my level, uh, the director, uh, deputy director. I, I'll pass it on to them that, you, that you're interested it, in the it, program. It's just, to me, so. it's because I'm finding that so many people gave up landlines and they're using their cell mm -hmm. phones so that when they, when, you, when they call an emergency, they may not mm -hmm. have the presence of mind to tell you a lot. And mm -hmm. 
this way they have an opportunity. It, it's supposed to pop up on an emergency responder screen. It would, it would be in the dispatch. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be come to the actual our members, but it would be. It would, it's supposed to apparently pop up on dispatch, but it's supposed to. It's like a software program that has more information. But like I said, I, I'm not an expert on it. I can't really. I mean, somebody could come from this smart911.com and stand right next to me and give me kind of like their spiel and all their literature and everything, and I might say, well, the best thing in the world. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So right now. Uh, it's not something that has really come to the forefront. It hasn't been any, something that our department's had the opportunity to investigate, and we can do that moving forward. I'd, I'd pass it on to the director and the deputy director. I would appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Do you still uh, give information? Do people still call on and tell you when they're going to be on vacation? Yeah, houses? we do vacation checks. Um, you know, we do actually well visit call or well well calls. You know, like calls. Uh, if, if somebody wants their like, uh, elderly mom to be checked up on, she's home alone, she really, doesn't really get out, and they say, hey, you know, can you call my mom between you know, uh, March you know, and, and you know, I don't know, you know, usually like December and March, can you call her between then? Just because she doesn't get out a lot, just make sure she's okay. Can you call her like once a week and we offer that program? That's some, all you have to do is call us at the station, and we'll do these, you know, this check, you know, well check, you know, phone calls. Same one with the Rosie Rec Department. It's the same program. Yeah, we work together. Yeah. Right. And then the other thing, the other program is like the vacations, the vacation checks. I just assigned officers today at the briefing to go check houses on the vacation list. So, and then our officers are always checking those houses. And what we find normally is people go on vacation, they come back early, and they're like, ooh, I, I forgot to call you guys. <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> yes, ma'am. A couple times ago, and I don't remember who it was that was giving it, but there was a little red sticker you could go on your front door, Yeah, that's a free program. I mean, we don't we don't have those we don't have those to disseminate. But those file for life, all of our personnel uh, are aware of those. The file for life, um, they use them in a lot of like assisted living centers, uh, senior living complexes, senior apartments. So, but if, but but you could get it through here, and and then like you said, there is a sticker. I'm aware of the program, and. It has like a little um, folder or little little thing you put on your your front of your refrigerator, and then you take it out. It has like you said all allergies, meds, med history, um, the things that an emergency you know a medical technician or, or a paramedic would need. So uh, we don't have them at the public safety department, but I could look into that. I'll look into it for you. Who's your point? Of, are you the point of contact for the? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I would assume the area agency on aging so, has that information. I have your email right here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're my point of contact. <laughs> so no, I I I I'll, I'll look into that though to see if we can you know if there's any s sources where we can get that from. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I'm, I totally know the program and I've used it before for like responses. Um, Northville, we use, I ran into that a lot out there in Northville. Yes, ma'am. I, I think that's great. Neighbors saying, that's what I was saying. Remember, I was talking about like calling when you hear something or you see something suspicious. Like, I, you know, that's that's whole part of the living in the community. I mean, I mean, the people like complain about like the lawnmowers and stuff like that. But I mean, I I live in a community. If I don't want to hear anybody, if I don't want to deal with anybody, I'm going to go up north. I'm going to buy 10 acres <laughs> on some dirt road. I probably won't be able to get to my house in the winter time. But I live in a community, you know, right? Because you know the schools and shopping and all the what it affords my family. Um, but I like 
I like people looking out after my, you know, I like, I like the fact that my kids are home and my neighbors, you know, calling me and like, hey, Robin, and she's like, yeah, is everything okay? You know, <laughs> you know, your kids are, <laughs> your kids are fighting again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm on the way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You just call call the department. I have I have these from the home in the Knox boxes, and I brought a bunch of my business cards. Now they have they have my uh, contact information on, but they have the department phone number, and our department phone number, the business line, you know, is two four eight five four one 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 eight zero eleven eighty. Pretty easy five four one eleven eighty, and you just call call the department. Listen, I mean, we we will do everything we can to accommodate the citizens and if people you know a vacation check we'll try to do that if if it's uh, something suspicious we'll we'll immediately respond to that um, we that I mean you just you have to call and then don't don't be afraid don't be hesitate please don't so thank you we are, we are truly here for you guys and and so, so yeah, but if you want to come and talk and have coffee too I'm, I drink way too much of it my doctor said I have to go to decaf so I know, I know it's sad so I may mind but other guys would like it you see I, I got to watch that stuff so, so but I, I thank you very much for uh, let me talk thank you so much all right thanks great Put this out here. All right. Um, do you guys should we I want break? Your card. Should we break for a little bit so we can? Yeah. If anybody has individual right. questions. Oh yeah. So that's my speed. Yes. You know, can I just say that there's an annual report that the, the, the police chief files and it's online and it's I printed one copy out here, but it shows the whole hierarchy of the department, all the officers. It tells all the services. It's really a, a good thing to kind of look yeah. at. And if you want to see it, you can. That's why, I mean, you, yeah, you want to, does everybody, everybody understands public safety though, right? Does everybody understand public safety? You understand a public safety department? Well, go ahead. I'm not sure. Right. Right. Yeah, now that you're saying right. it, right. Oh, here we go again. I thought I did, but I don't know. So, so, because I, I just, I, I just actually, I just happened to remember this, so, like, I had a, it was a, a brief explanation of, of cross training. So cross training, so being in public safety, all right. If you, traditionally you have a fire department and a police department, all right. And I'm not taking anything away from the police officers just do police officers, firefighters just do firefighters. I have both my family, you know, both noble professions, and you know my full, my brother's a full time firefighter, so I got to be careful. But then, but so, but public safety basically takes takes one person and we train, cross train our people to do multiple roles. So say for instance, you're, you're a police officer, you come to the department and like, okay, you, we're gonna, we'll hire you, but you're not just gonna be a police officer from this day forward, you're gonna go to fire school, you can be certified at the, like the full-time firefighter level. So like a volunteer can be a firefighter one license level or certification level. But here, a full-time firefighter has to be a firefighter two. So our personnel have to be trained to firefighter two level. They have to do EMS training. They have to have medical training, um, at least the medical first responder level. Um, so our personnel can basically are like all hazards. So if they're if they're on their patrol cars, there's a fire. They're trained to you know put down their protective equipment uh, and fight the fire. If there's armed robbery, obviously they deal with that in the traditional you know law enforcement capacity. If there's a medical. Our, our police you know, vehicles, our patrol vehicles, have a full complement of medical equipment. We have AEDs, we have you know, backboards, we have all the, you know, the you know, bandages, the dressings, um, sterile water, you name it. You know, so we have all the medical equipment that we're required to have as well. So instead of having like 16 firefighters and 16 police officers, you have 16 public safety officers that do all the jobs. Oh. And that's, and you asked me how many there are. There's six, there's 16, 17 including the director, 
But there's, so there'd be 17 sworn members of the Heinz West Public Safety Department. And you have a special certification that only a handful of cities in the What's state, that? the SCI, whatever it is, um, I can't think of the name. Mm -hmm. Jeff Jenks was saying that we get certification for the police department. Oh, the CLIA? Yeah. yeah the, the, we're CLIA accredited, less for our law enforcement services. So what happens is, um, and this we've on, we're on our fifth certification. There last every three years. So like we're at the 2015 to 2018 cycle. We just got our award in March of this year. Um, so what CLE is, it's a law enforcement accreditation. So we're accredited law enforcement agents on a national level. And what that means is that we have, like uh, starting back uh, years ago, we had uh, uh, Lieutenant Armold, was his name, Nicholas Armold. So uh, he, it was kind of his, his baby is essentially. So, and he's moved on now, he's a director of public safety for Portage. All right, so very knowledgeable, uh, you know, professional, law enforcement, law enforcement professional. And what he did is he went, and when he did, when Huntington Woods decided to do a CALEA, they did essentially 100% review of everything. It's like basically going into your house, looking at every single item in your house, cataloging every single item, not only cataloging it, but then you're gonna make a policy, a written policy for using it. So it'd be like going in your kitchen and saying, my toaster. My toaster will only be used during these times of day. And then you go into a policy. The toaster will be utilized by turning it this way, plugging it in at this point. Do you see what I'm saying? Then depressing. So, and they, what they did is 100% of all of our policies, our functions, were like basically dissected, broken down to the written form, and we have actual policies for everything that our department does. Like your profession. To, well, to keep it, not necessarily to keep it professional. Not, it's not just professional. I, I, I believe that professionalism comes from within us, right? So I don't care what your job is. Like you can be professional. You can be a guard, professional sanitation worker. You can be a professional teacher. You know, professionalism is, is not the job, so to speak, or the standard. It's more so to be standardized and consistent, all right? Because, you know, you're, you're, the, you're, you're the user of our products, correct? So we, our product to use provide our services for police, fire, and EMS. And the best, what our responsibility is, not only to do the best product for you, and one of the ways that we could provide that best product for the police services is make sure that our police, that we have oversight to make sure that we're offering those services on a consistent basis and make sure that our officers ha are working off of one guiding principle that, that meets our mission, the, the mission of the Huntington Woods Public Safety Department. And, all, and so each one of our employees train on these policies, each one of our new employees train on these policies. We have a certain way to do things, very controlled, and we meet the national standards. That means so, like for property. Remember, like um, you know, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was just watching a TV show not too long ago, and and you know they're doing the, like one of the true crime things. Remember on like the Discovery Channel, and they're talking about like this missing evidence, right? The missing evidence from the evidence room. Well, back in the 1980s, and in this case, and it was gone. Well, Kalia sets very strict guidelines on access to property on you know, how it can be stored, where it can be stored, how long it has to be stored. I mean, it's, it's just, it's very, it breaks it down to the, 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 the principles and it makes sure that you meet each one of these benchmarks. So it, it, was, it was a really big thing. Uh, a very, and, and what happens also for our community as well is uh, that CLIA, Really, we don't really gain, see any financial gain from it, but we get financial gain in the fact that, uh, like insurance premiums, insurance premiums, uh, the, the department would get a break on that. But that's not why we do it. We do it because we're providing the best services to, to the citizens. And I, and I truly do believe that. I mean, it, it's worked great. And then, so like I said, Lieutenant Armel did it. He, he left, you know, other bigger and better things. He's running his own large, much larger agency. And then uh, it got passed on to Lieutenant Zawacki. He administers it currently today. 
So, and then he's continuing it. And like I said, it's our fifth award. Um, as far as the other thing is on the fire side, there's, we don't, there's no accreditation that we don't have, but we did get a recently, uh, last year we, we had a, what's ISO, it's called, the Insurance Services Organization. And, we, and ISO, fire departments are scaled from one being the very highest to like you know, 12 being the lowest. You know, like nine, maybe not 12, but like nine. So one's the best, nine is like rural, like being up north. I think it actually goes to 10, so one to 10. So it'd be like 10 would be no fire protection, you know, nine would be rural fire protection, no hydrants, no water supply. And what this does, it, it takes in not only, it takes in these multiple, uh, it's like an investigation, it's almost like a, like a, like an, um, an assess, uh, what is it, when you're, you're you have an accounting, you know, in, the, in accounting, your person comes in for an audit, right? So they're basically auditing everything. They're auditing fire hose, the equipment we have, the personnel we have, how many hours of training have you had specifically for this year? What are your certifications? Do you have a fire inspector? You know, does that fire truck, you know, have a small pump or a big pump? Does it carry a lot of water over a little water? What kind of nozzles do you have? I mean, that's how it's a very minuscule level. And then they also look at, and it, it affects other agencies too within the city. And then, you know, like um, when we do these uh, improvements to the water system here in Huntington Woods, they put all those new water mains in. Uh, what they do is they go to the water department and then they actually test the water system to see, you know, wh what, what's the capacity of the water system? How dependable is it? And then they go and know the, the public works and then we have, uh, Huntington Woods Public Works, uh, you know, there's a great crew over there and they're, they have water licenses and they go over there and uh, they, they're actually specialized to see how, you know, what their training is and, and then also um, it touches on communications and dispatch. So you have these three different, ISO, don't three, <laughs> it's three. So we, we got, we achieved number three, but which is, we went from a five to a three, so we were like right in the middle. And we actually bumped up on uh, two points on that 10 point scale, which is, is not very often, it's almost unheard of. And which would put our public safety department, and it's not, it's not for just for public safety, it's fire departments. It's a fire department rating, like in the top uh, 3% in the entire state of Michigan. Um, and there's only like, I want to say there's only like you know 38 or 39 departments in all of Michigan that have an ISO three or better. There's no ISO ones. There's some ISO twos, but you know there's only 38 departments that have a three or above. So, so and it lowers your homeowners insurance yeah. policies. Yes, ma'am. All right, well, as far as the actual projects go, I can't speak into that because obviously that's not my expertise. You would have to talk to public works personnel, but what do we do if, to get in there with a the fire truck? We get in there with a the fire truck because what they do is the public works department, and then, like I said, I mean, I can't say enough good about the public works people because what they do is, is they're always cognizant about our needs as well. So when we go out, when they have these projects, you know, and it says road closed. You know how they have the road closed signs and everything? Well, we don't want everybody going on the road. And it's either you could damage what they've just installed, like, the, like you know, they might have some fixtures in their drains or something. But um, it's road closed to general traffic, but for emergency purposes, they, they leave us ramps. They leave us access to get in there. So even though all the cars might be parked on other streets and that street's blocked off, it's not blocked off to us because every day when they leave, they leave it so that we can gain, we can, we can gain access to it. They leave it available, uh, accessible to emergency vehicles.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, what they do is, in, in a lot of times when they're when they're working, were you there when they were working? Were they working at the time, ma'am? No. No, they weren't. I mean, normally when they're working, they'll do it. But when they when they leave, I'm sorry. What, what were you saying? Yeah, there's always there's always going to be an access to get down there. Um, it may be from the opposite side of the street, but even when they're working. Before they leave for the day, they'll build us like a ramp like, to get down in those areas. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have a volunteer fire uh, group as well, yes, right? Yes, we do. How does that integrate with your group? The volunteer firefighters, um, we, it, it's, it's open to you know, pretty much anybody who wants to you know, get the training. Uh, you know, it's an application process. So they go through all this application process. They go through a background investigation and um, you know there is a, a rigorous training requirement like uh, our last person that had hired on to the fire volunteers he started it and he was like working his full-time job going to like the weekend fire academy which was essentially like six months long six months of his life was spent like two two evenings I believe and or one one or two evenings and like one weekend day like an entire Saturday so that it was like the part-time academy. If you go to the full-time academy, I, I believe, you know, somebody from the fire academy might kick me in the pants here, but I believe it's like six weeks, six to eight weeks for the full-time academy. Uh, but there was, it, he was going to the part-time academy, so it was stretched out to like six months. So it was a huge time commitment. Uh, how do they integrate with us? Um, they're basically, when we have a, you know, serious fire, or uh, where we need more manpower, we call for the volunteers, they can be lifesavers. Um, because what will happen is, you know, if we were to have a fire right now, there would be, you know, you'd have a, a staff of like three to four personnel that would initiate the fire, would initiate, uh, normally would call for additional resources from neighboring public safety departments, um, in which we have a now what's called Mavis Mutual Aid Box Alarm System that we're part of. Um, and they're always willing, and they're they're like, they're they're wonderful. The other public safety departments, so they'll come as long as our as well as our fire volunteers. Once all their mutual aid gets there, our fire volunteers a lot of times will arrive, right when our personnel are coming out, getting like to the point of exhaustion. So the fire volunteers like our seven, second wave of attack. So sometimes they're, they're the ones that are putting out the fire because, you know, they get in there knocking down a little bit. You know, our personnel come out to rehab, and then our fire volunteers come in and, and you know take care of take Are care of them. Actively recruit people. Or keep people? Uh, we 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 do make attempts to actively recruit people. Uh, it, it's a very small core right now. It's a very small yet very dedicated core. Um, currently, right now, I mean, as far as the number of personnel, we we have uh, I believe there's three to four currently that we have. Um, we've had some a lot of turnover, and we've had some of our fire volunteers have moved on to bigger and better things. They're, they they started with us and they moved on to full time firefighter jobs. And I'm happy to say that it's good for us, right? Because people want them, and they, we've, they've been trained well. But it's also bad in the fact that now we have to, we've lost that person, we've lost that position, um, and so we're always looking for candidates. It's just, it's very difficult to get somebody to commit the time. So when we find somebody that's already pre-certified, that, that helps out a little bit too. Yes, ma'am. I'm just kind of looking at this report and, and wondering, you know, if there is a lot of, of petty larceny with in cars that are not going home. Uh, higher, like safety or <laughs> a higher incidence of things are stolen from unlocked cars than locked vehicles. So. I can tell you right now, in all of, like, well, not all of my, I would say probably in the last 10 years, I remember one vehicle that was actually smashed. They actually smashed the window. The driver left a laptop on the front passenger seat, laptop and some other stuff. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I, I hate, to, like, usually when it comes to the larcenies from, like, automobiles, it's really like 100% guarantee that they left it unlocked. I, you'd be surprised how many people leave their stuff unlocked. 
So I, I also am a military man, so I can tell you about locking things, but <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> you should be always always lock your stuff. Lock it. If you don't lock it, it's just is welcoming them to come into it and yeah, steal stuff. So I have a question. It's a little different uh, about signs in the city, traffic signs, and if we think there's a problem with a particular sign, um, do we contact the police? Yeah, you contact you contact the. Uh, the police department, you're saying like a sign, like a traffic control sign? Like a stop sign. So, um, yeah, you would contact the police initially, okay. you know, and then that, what we can do is we have focused enforcement, traffic enforcement. And so, remember how I was saying that if you don't call us and you don't tell us, we can't do anything about it. Right. And when you do call, it does, it, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to call us, I'm not going to make a difference. Well, it does make a difference because what happens when you call the department, the dispatcher writes it on there and then comes and tells you know, us, you know, usually the command officer for the shift, the lieutenant and the sergeant, and then the lieutenant and the sergeant puts it on like the briefer for the day. And, we'll, and if you say, hey, listen, there's cars speeding down hard and they're blowing right through this intersection or whatever, he'll say, okay, uh, you know, Joe, I want you to go out to Hart and Nadine, and, you know, I mean, Hart and Newport, and take a look at that intersection. And cars are speeding through there, and then give me and log, you know, like a half an hour or an hour of enforcement right there, targeted enforcement, traffic enforcement. So Actually, we do it all the time. It's right in the parking lot, of the rec center, um, where you can enter you know, behind the library, and then you go into the main rec center. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a stop sign there. And it's a blind corner. Mm -hmm. So as a pedestrian, I was almost, I, I wasn't that close, but it was close enough because the person didn't stop. As a driver, there isn't a stop sign going the other way, mm -hmm. and, um, but someone was coming through and didn't stop also. So I don't know if people aren't seeing it because it is a blind corner. Oh, no, they, they, do you mean, are they not seeing the stop sign? Oh, they see the stop sign. <laughs> <laughs> right, they know the stop signs there. <laughs> people know the stop signs there. I've almost got run down there too. Okay. I'm just walking across the parking lot and just went, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean thank you that you almost went yeah. down. Yeah. No, I was, no, it, it, it's, it's, it's scary. I mean, that parking lot, you know, and my daughter went to one year at, uh, she went to one year over here at Burton. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> well, I don't have to do this anymore. It, it's, it's pretty scary over there especially in the morning. So yes, I, it's something that we, you know, we do keep an eye on. Um, but let's face it, I mean, I always try to implore to people, that you, you have to look at the reasonableness of, the, of something. If somebody says, like police cars, 99% of them are fully marked with striping on them, bright striping police. So, I mean, we're not like out there sneaking around, so to speak, to catch people. So a lot of times when you have a fully marked patrol unit, I mean, even the, the citizens need to take into account that, you know, it's possible or highly likely that if, if somebody sees a fully marked police car, most people are going to slow down. So what you see in one day is not going to maybe different when that fully marked police car is sitting there. That being said, a lot of times, sometimes cars, when, you know, it's just, I, mean, I don't know if you term it physics or how you term it, but when you're standing still, a lot of times a car doing like 31 miles an hour looks like it's doing like 40 or, you know, 45 in a certain area. You see what I'm saying? Like a street that might be overgrown with trees or something like that. Wow, they're really flying. Well, you know, you're used to seeing 20, 21 miles an hour. Somebody goes by 31. But 31 is only six miles faster than the speed limit, so to speak. So our officers are cognizant; they're watching those, um, and they do keep an eye. And they're very aggressive as far as like in the residence, in the residential streets. If there's somebody speeding, you know, we're not. It's not like the same as on the secondary roads or the expressway or something. So, but if there's ever a problem with it, call us. All right. So yeah, me neither. Thank you me so neither. Much. What did it say? Twenty to thirty minutes? Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys had a lot of questions. You guys had a lot of questions, huh? It was very helpful.
All right. No, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So listen, if you guys want to stop by the station, drop off, you know, cookies. Yeah. <laughs> stop by. Stop by for some coffee. Stop by for coffee. You know, we'll, we'll be there. Thank so, you. all right. Thank you very much. I really. Don't.